Well, hello everyone, it's your favorite man-child, Super Jesus Jackson. Jaws! Directed by the great Steven Spielberg. It's one of the most well-known movies of all time. It's critically and commercially acclaimed. It's the movie that gave birth to the term summer blockbuster. Which is all really interesting because while the movie is very marketable and universal, it's still a fairly dark movie. We like to think of marketable movies as digestible, no pun intended, but you know, family friendly movies. However, Jaws isn't necessarily the most family friendly movie, but it rocks nevertheless. A couple weeks ago, actually, I was able to watch it for the first time, believe it or not, in an actual movie theater. And it was just absolutely incredible. I totally understand the hype for it. I mean, I can't understand it when it came out on July 4th, hence the shirt. And, you know, I'm always late with these things. But I can get a sense of, of how impactful this movie was. Especially, you know, the audacity, in a good way, that it had to come out during the summer. When everyone was swimming, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a perfect perfect time to release it, but at the same time, very courageous. And so, yes, of course, I wanted to talk about Jaws, but really not the entire movie, although I would love to, but really just one scene, because this one scene I saw in the theater and it moved me. It really stood out to me, and I bet you're going to be surprised when you find out which scene it is, because it's probably not going to be what you think it is. So let's watch the scene together, of course, as we do. And then we'll rendezvous afterwards and talk about it. Give us a kiss. Why? Because I need it. That's it. That's it. I mean, that section right there has so much to unpack. What did I tell you, though? I mean, seriously, what did I tell you? You had no idea it was that one, right? Or maybe you did. Maybe you can fucking read my mind now. Who knows? But yeah, this is my favorite scene from the whole movie, believe it or not. <laughs> and I will argue it is the best scene in the entire film. Like really when you get down to it, the the meat of the film, I would say. Or I don't know. You could you could argue that the meat of the film is, you know, when they're in the boat and they're fucking talking and you know, they're trying to kill this shark and that whole section, right? You could argue that that's the best scene, but you know me. You know me, I like to be the guy that chooses the scene that no one else would choose, so I'm choosing this one. But no, I mean, really, this one just has so much nuance to it, I absolutely love it. But why though? What makes this scene so great? Well, interestingly enough, a lot of what makes this scene so great is the context surrounding the previous events leading up to this scene. So in the film, this scene is right after the sheriff, the main character, uh, was just publicly humiliated by the mother of the little boy that was eaten by the shark in the ocean. The sheriff was blamed for it, for letting people still swim, knowing that there had been a death prior, and that it was probably shark-related, the death. It was a really sad and powerful scene, and it's followed by this really introspective and subtle scene, the complete opposite. So here he is going to eat dinner with his son. He's beyond frustrated, annoyed, angry, sad, disturbed, all of those things. 
And as for the kid, well, he's a kid. So what do kids do when you're sad or angry? They annoy you. They annoy you by copying you, by fucking playing Simon Says with you. Of course, this is how it feels, often, when you're the one that's sad and the child is doing this to you. But if you're a spectator, you realize that the kid is just being a kid. It's not their fault. The same thing would happen if you are, I don't know, a, you're visiting your friend who has a kid and the kid is doing that to your friend. You would see it or you'd be that parent who's like, yeah, fuck that kid. <laughs> and really, in the, in the grand scheme of things, if you're, if you're being, you know, very humble and open minded and not so overtaken by emotion, you realize that the kid's actually pretty cute. And what I love about Brody and really not just this kid. Every time a kid does it, I think it's it's I think it's objectively cute. Okay, it's innocent, it's naive, and it's well intentioned at the same time. Or is it? I don't fucking know. I'm not getting into fucking child psychology and the philosophy of being a child in this video. It's just not happening. But what I love about Brody is that he might have noticed it for a bit at first and ignored it, which is something that we all do, or he didn't until later. But he eventually looked at the kid, right? And instead of replying with anger or annoyance to the kid and make him feel like shit, which is something, again, we all tend to do when we're angry, he almost looks like he's going to by playfully responding with the look of a monster. Which, you know, I speaking from experience, and maybe some of you too, there's truth to every joke, right? Uh, so it could have been that when he was doing this little monster face, uh, it, it, it could have just been him showing his anger, you know, in, in, in a playful way, but still showing his anger. And then the child responds back playfully. And then the father just asks for a kiss. Because at the end of the day, he still has his kid. And that mother that yelled at him and humiliated him doesn't. And he's grateful, and he finds the motivation to keep going for his son, rather than giving up. But see, this is where it gets interesting, because in the midst of all of this, or really within all of this, is a beautiful song that's playing. It's very childlike, it's very light, has a brighter melody, but below that melody is this beautiful cello, just, uh, I don't know, fucking two octaves down or some shit. It's very ominous. I mean, it, it, it's almost like it's literally the shark of the scene. And of course, the titular song of Jaws is a very low, 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 low piano note. But cellos often, well, they excel in high notes and low notes, but they excel in extremities. Uh, and in this case, we're using the very low notes of the cello, which is, again, very fitting considering it's about a shark. It's swimming slowly below the dialogue, below what's happening on screen, eerily below. But see, that set of low notes that this song has throughout the scene is what the dad is thinking. The anxiety and anger towards the shark situation. I mean, it's, it's literally the shark just violating his head in this instance. And really the whole town. I mean, that's the narrative of this entire, you know, uh, moment is the damn shark. However, the kid is the lighter melody that's above. And even the instrumentation, it sounds pretty childish. It sounds almost like a, like a little xylophone. And the melody is being playful. Uh, and it's <laughs> what the kid is doing, right? We really can't not see this dynamic play because it's playing right in front of us, right? The dad is the low notes and the kid is that light melody. We see that right happening right in the dinner table. And the music, however, is quite the opposite because it's quite subtle. It's very easy to miss all these things. It's almost like what you have to do to catch a shark. Be patient and pay attention. It's just all brilliant. It It's absolutely genius and it encapsulates everything that is great about this scene and about this movie. It's really the score too. I mean, that that's really the cherry on top of this scene. And really, Part of the reason, too, why it spoke to me is because what happens in this scene, it just really inspires me to be a good father. Like, one day. I don't want to be rugged and be that unplayful father, you know, that that one just that's so irritable, you know, that you don't want to speak to, that you don't want to trust, or you don't feel like trusting, you feel like you can't have fun with. Like, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to let my emotions and my daily job take over my head, take over my ability to enjoy my family and to give them 
the time and the love, you know, outwardly that they need. I want to bond with them. And this scene right here, though, is just a perfect example of you're human. This is going to happen to you. Terrible things are going to happen that will screw you over from effectively bonding with your family correctly and, and being, you know, that that ideal father. But again, you're human. So you're, you are going to fail at it sometimes in some ways, but you can still bounce back. And he did so, you know, instead of resorting to anger, instead of yelling at his son and being like, don't you understand I'm angry right now? Leave me the hell alone. Get the hell out of here. Stop fucking copying me. He just, he gives in a little bit, but he might've been playing with his son or a little bit of both because he's human. He released a little bit of his anger and I do that all the time. I mean, I, I do that all the time. It said, it, let me, let me just give you a little example. It's kind of like when you're walking and you fucking hit your toe somewhere or you, you hit your face, or you hit some part of your body, there is, a, there is a special two seconds that happens when you hit that part of your body with some object that, you know, you had no almost no control over. The, the split two seconds of pure anger, like literally Satan f is just fosters inside you and screams when you hit yourself with anything for like two seconds. And then if you're a rational person, you don't punch it back like some people do. Instead, you just kind of like, and then you just let it go. <laughs> that is what the dad did. That is what the dad did, and I love it. At least that's what it that it, that's what he's doing, you know, in my head. Uh, it makes sense. But of course, that's the beauty of film, right? Is it's subjective. I'm really interested to see how this scene worked for you, or it didn't. I don't fucking know. But there we have it: the quintessential July Fourth movie, the summer blockbuster, Jaws. Uh, well, really, the best scene from Jaws, and not really Jaws, but a much more nuanced scene from the movie Jaws, uh, that is still about the shark, and the shark is still present in this scene with that score, so that's pretty awesome. But yeah, I, I really want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Give this video a like if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. If you are freaking happy that I finally talked about Jaws. Because there's, and believe me, there's so many movies I still have yet to watch. So many. My girlfriend would know. <laughs> but yeah, subscribe if you, if you enjoyed it. Or unsubscribe if you have started to really detest me. Um, in which case, I'm sorry. But yes, um, if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you, you beautiful creature. But um, other than that, I th yeah, that's it for me. You all take care, stay safe, and until next time, I love you.